Good morning. It's so good to see you, and I'm pleased that you're with me for this presentation. I'll share my screen, where we are going to be looking at a really important question to all of us right now, which is basically, how do we grow self-directed learners with habits of mind? When we are thinking about this question, we've learned an awful lot during the pandemic. So let's just look for a moment at some of the things that I know that we all have learned, which is that self-directed learning must be explicitly taught and requires time and reflection, and that we need to increase the opportunities in which we're asking students to be self-directed. So our insights about engagement are really that we're asking the question because none of us really likes to see that row of black screens if we're remote, or even if they're in class and they're looking at us, but with the masks on, we're beginning to notice that we need to be paying more attention to how do we make sure that as we're expecting students to be more self-directed, they're engaged with us, that they're looking at us, that they're talking with us, that they're ready for some interaction. So a couple of other insights that we've had about engagement are first, the teacher talk does not always engage student learning. No matter how clever we are, no matter how exciting we are, that there's a limit to how much people can actually absorb. I'm sure you're finding this in the conference, which is you begin to feel like, I just need a little break and I need to be thinking about what you're saying. The second is that compliance does not necessarily mean self-direction, meaning I may do the tasks that you ask me to do, I may fulfill the assignments, but that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm on to some engagement that will motivate my self-direction. And finally, the students need challenging tasks and critical conversations to engage them in and motivate them for learning. So this means that we have to kind of look and see what is our intention when we're really giving students an opportunity to practice self-direction. So we are now going to look at what we believe, Art Costa and I and our work with Habits of Mind, are really critically central to self-direction because habits of mind are a set of thinking dispositions. So they're really about how do we challenge you to do thinking? They're social, emotional, and cognitive behaviors. In other words, they're ones that help us to respond effectively and respond thoughtfully, but they're also, habits of mind are also those that are a part of our social and emotional framework. The competencies, for example, where we're asking students to be more socially aware, to be more interested in how they're working with one another, to be more self-managing and so more self-relational, being sure that they're paying attention to the relationships that they have. So if you'll notice, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the habits of mind, the habits of mind are these behaviors. Now notice something important. They're all behaviors. They're all ING words, meaning they're about acting. They're about skills. They're about something that you can learn. They can be taught. You can learn them and you can get better at it. So notice that, for example, when I'm saying that they're about your social and emotional relationships with others, it really talks to the question of, am I listening with understanding and empathy? Am I able to not only hear what you're saying, affirm that I understand it, but am I also empathic to the way that this experience is, help, is making you feel? How do I really know that I'm engaged with that? So we're really looking at these and thinking about these habits of mind. And so I'm going to ask you to enter in the chat, where and when did one of these habits of mind help you stay self-directed during this difficult time? Which of these really kind of jump out at you and say, you know, what I found was that I was able to persist when, or I was responding with wonderment and awe, and how that helped me to feel more motivated, more self-directed, more able to manage this time, this very difficult time. Now, I'm sure that you found that there are ways in which persisting, for example, has helped you, and you're beginning to pay attention to that. So here's something that we can do with our students. So a real out of the gate good idea is if we want the students to be paying attention to habits of mind, and by the way, you don't need to do all 16, you can choose some, 
specific to what you see is going on in your classroom with your students and what they might need. But you might be starting, for example, as many do, and this teacher did, a sixth grade teacher in California, and she said, I'm going to teach persisting explicitly. I'm going to make it clear to students that this is, should be in their repertoire. This is something that they can do. And she started by saying, well, let me ask my students. She modeled it. She said something about her own persisting. And then she said, let me model this with the students and then have the students think about experiences during remote when they were home where they really needed to persist. And she sent the opportunity for Google Zoom slides and they did their Google slides and they submitted them. So here's one from John Paul Harrow. And he said, doing my chores. So routine messed up. One thing I persisted to do during the quarantine was to do my chores. Doing my chores was easy when I was in school because I would do them after school. But when school got closed, I got totally sidetracked. You know, I was happy when this whole quarantine started, but I think I have completely lost it. An attempt. My first attempt at solving my chore problem was to wake up early. So notice now, now he's waking up early, but honestly, he doesn't really get to it. He's distracted. Then he says, my solution. After many days of sleeping till one in the afternoon, I came up with a solution. I would do my chores after I did my schoolwork. You're probably wondering why I didn't do this in the first place. Well, I honestly don't know. I guess I didn't think of it till now. My chores are one thing I persisted on doing this week. Thanks for listening. So notice what we have here is a student who is really saying, here's how I persisted in the chores that I was supposed to do. And what helped me was I started and I tried to develop some strategies. I tried to wake up early, that didn't work. I tried to not distracting myself, whoa, that didn't work. And then I finally decided that the best thing was to just do it after later in the day so I could sleep, which is what I like to do. I came up with doing my schoolwork first and then doing my chores. Now, the incredibly important part of all this self-managing is that you have the idea of what do I do when I need to persist? I know the meaning of it. I know that you told me it's important, but what are some strategies that I use that help me to persist? Thank you.